be a pole dancer as an Ivy League student? Well, I definitely think that it comes with a lot of privilege. Definitely we're not individuals who are doing pole dancing for any type of like life-sustaining purposes. We're very privileged because we have the choice of pole dancing, whereas some people are, that's their only source of income, but they're the people that get the bad end of the stick. It's like very strongly associated with like strippers and stripping and like sex work. And I think that those things in general have like a really negative stigma, negative connotation. Pole posse at Cornell is not like, we're not like doing sex work or anything like that. But I also think we respect that like heritage. Like I like don't shy away from that when people like ask about that, like that's an important part of where pole came from. Pole dancers in some studios are trying to like destigmatize it by still like offering exotic classes and being like, this is a way you can like feel empowered. And this is like, it's not bad to feel like, to like want to be like, oh, look at me, I'm sexy. I don't think the sexual nature is going to ever completely go away, um, which I think is fine. I think it's an integral part of where pole dancing kind of came from. And so to just kind of abandon it wouldn't be fair to the to pole dancing as a whole. It's not just for fun, it's people's lives, which they can be having fun with it when it is their lives, but it's not necessarily always that they're having fun while doing it. My friends often joke, they're like, if CS doesn't work out, like, you know, you'll always have a career. Or my mom's like, oh yeah, we're paying like $70,000 for our daughter to become a pole dancer. Again, it's just a great group of people which are really open-minded and uh, just going out of the way to teach everyone all about this new fun activity, which once again, society has a bad viewpoint of, so having some people go out of your way to teach you about that and all the positive things that come from it, uh, really open my eyes a little bit more to other situations in life where you shouldn't just automatically accept what society says about things. You should kind of take a deeper look, uh, especially at the people who are actively do it and maybe get another perspective about it. It's cool because at an Ivy League, you're expected to be all stuffy and like, oh, I'm such and such and I'm gonna keep my nose in these books. So I guess in that sense, it's breaking the stereotype of just scholarship. I feel like I've gained a lot of strength and confidence both physically and mentally doing this and I think a lot of people, others, believe the same. I do think it a little bit breaks stereotypes of the typical kind of like hard-working like nerdy kind of student that some people think. I think a lot of people at Ivy Leagues don't think that once they get here and they're like oh there's lots of different people but I think it definitely does a little bit break the stereotype. That's my, my go-to quote is came for the pole, stayed for the posse. I like, like pole dancing, like obviously, like it's super fun, I'm really into it, but like without the people, I would not have continued doing it. The like support of the whole community really like has built up my confidence. Everyone looks so graceful and strong. Like that's what made me come as I like, saw people perform and I was like, oh my God, I wanna be that graceful and strong. Uh, back in the beginning of the poll, I was very, very self-conscious about, aside from just being in front of a crowd, uh, just taking off layers in front of people I didn't know. Things like, you know, going to the beach, I felt extremely uncomfortable taking off a shirt. Uh, you know, now here I am, of course, no shirt from the camera. There's the natural instinct of, oh, I'm going to try these crazy things because I'm an adult and I can do what I want out of the eyes of my parents. Exploring your body and its limits, because pole dancing hurts. It's not, it's not pretty <laughs> in the aftermath. It's pretty when you do it, but inside you're screaming, my skin. It's just you and the pole kind of having this moment of, I can throw myself around this pole in a really cool way, and my muscles, are capable of that. It's also, it's, it's athleticism, it's beauty, it's dance. Especially around like Cornell as a whole, we've had nothing but positive, more or less nothing but positive feedback. A lot of the anonymity, anonymity comes from people that searching for things to yell about on the internet. My favorite one that we got was hooking for murder, because um, we were raising money for Planned Parenthood. Um, so it was, that was the murder aspect and we were hooking for murder. Um, 
<laughs> which I love. That's like, honestly, I say that all the time now. Some people were like, I'm not never gonna send my child to Cornell now. I think I was actually quoted in like an alt-right like news article. And I was like, this is good. Like glad that that will come up now when you Google search my name. Push back on Planned Parenthood. It was all about, you know, hooking for murder, killing babies, you know, using school funding for things like that, which is not true. We were not using school funding for any of that. And again, Planned Parenthood, there's so many great things out there. It's not strictly about abortion. Even if it was, uh, there's no reason school clubs can't make political statements. People just not wanting women um, to feel like empowered in their own body and their own sexuality. The second a woman wants to like show her body like for herself or to others, like the second she wants to do it, like it's not okay. And I think a lot of that came through in those comments as well, because they were like, these women like call themselves feminists, like blah, 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 which like, hey, yeah, like, yeah, I do call myself a feminist, great. But also like Cornell Pole Posse isn't only women. Um, and that assumption like kind of reveals some of what they're like actually trying to say, which they're trying to be like, you sluts, you whores. And it's like, call me what you want. Like I'm having fun, I'm living my best life. And like, so is everyone else who's pole dancing, so. I, you wouldn't believe how many people asked me, uh, knowing that I'm in Pole Posse, have I seen the movie Hustlers? Or like, am I going to see it? Or all these different things. People are trying to push it into the Olympics and there's been a lot of that type of stuff going on lately. It's still taboo. People still look down on it. And so like, by doing it, people are kind of like taking control of themselves. Some of us had, you know, very humor-based performances. In which we had a bunch of costume changes. I was wearing a freaking mermaid's tail. Like, it doesn't really seem like stripping so much. It's kind of almost a comedy routine with dance thrown in. While other people had, you know, like a tearaway outfit, which, uh, you know, that's a little more closer to stripping because it seems clear that, you know, they're taking off layers. Um, so it's really what each person feels comfortable with and that's different for each individual person. Some people feel like they are a little more connected to the sexual side, but other pe people feel like they want to shy away. A club as a whole, we acknowledge it's there. We welcome individual people to lean into it more, but it's not something we feel like we have to force on people or that it's like overshadowing our performances. There's plenty of people who are definitely scared to tell parents and grandparents. It won't always have the stigma. I think eventually people will be like, oh, they only are doing this because they like it. It's not, it doesn't have to be about money or prostitution or any of that. It's, they like this and they're only wearing very little clothes because they need the skin contact. Because <laughs> th the main problem with pole dancing is that people see exposed skin as naughty, bad, taboo, but it's just about friction. Society can be slow to change their mind about things or to look into things which are new to them and society already has a good viewpoint about. I mean, fuck, we're still dealing with racism at this point. So I imagine it's going to be a long stretch for pole dancing to change as well. Um, I do think it's going to get better. I do think it's going to be a little more welcomed in society. Don't know how long that will take. Don't know if the full stigmatization will ever go away. Where, where is the line between like using your privilege and then having that be an abuse of power or using it to help somebody. I think that's a very shaky line that I'm, it's some, I don't even know where, where to draw, where to draw it. I think that maintaining and supporting our attitudes of positivity and maintaining support of, of strippers, of people of color, of queer people of color, who are the people who have brought pole dancing into the world so we continue to be looked down on. If we keep that at the forefront of our minds and we continue to show active support, not performative support for those groups, I think that it is okay to continue doing what we are doing as a way to stay in touch with the, the, with the roots and to kind of bring it into the hopefully a positive light in society.